Hi everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. How weird is it to be back with these bookcases? I love it. I miss these. I miss my babies so much. I'm actually home for a little bit because I went to go like organize my classroom and things like that. So I figured uh, while I was in the area, I would stop at my parents' house and go through my books and finally unhaul some. Um, so obviously, as you know, if you've watched me, is I live in a one-bedroom apartment right now. So as I read books, so all the books that I have at my apartment are all unread. And those books, as I read them, end up back here. And my mom is getting kind of annoyed with the fact that there are literally books everywhere. Like, I will just bring them back, like, by the bag full or just, like, by the pile full. And they are all over my room. And she is like, you need to figure this out and take care of these. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to organize these right now, like, because who knows what's happening. And then I thought, hopefully next year we want to be moving towards a house and it's going to be a lot to bring all the books that I own to a house. And I figured now is kind of a time to kind of go through and look to see what I can get rid of. Um... Right now I have a pile of 53 books that I'm going to get rid of. And all of these books are books that I have read. So it's not like I'm just getting rid of books that I haven't given the chance to love yet. I've given all these books a chance. Some of them I just don't care about anymore. And then others were just really bad and need to go. And there are probably more on my shelves that need to go. I just, this is just the initial run through. If they are a series, so like say I really didn't care for... I don't know. So I don't really care for the Shiver trilogy, but I have all three. So clearly I made the effort to go through all three. I'm going to keep them. Same thing with the Gone series. There's even some books that stayed on my shelf because I don't like them, but they're going to be pretty. Um, I feel like an unhaul is really interesting for me because I hate unhauling books, especially books that I've read because the books are my babies slash I feel like Back in the day, it was like, oh, this is almost like a trophy. Like, this is my trophy. I read this book. Trophy. Like, look how many books I've read. But now I'm like, I'm not going to want to move all of them. So I might as well just give over my power to donate them. So I'm sorry if I'm getting rid of one of your favorite books or something like that because it, that's not my intention, obviously. It's just books that I really did not care for or just don't want see myself wanting to reread or have on my shelf in the future. So obviously you saw the first book was A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This was one of my like big time reviews when I very first started my channel and I like kind of bashed this book. I didn't really bash it but I just I me and this book are not friends and I got some hate comments on that video because people just misinterpreted what I was saying kind of in that. I came very close to keeping this on my shelf because I was like, I do have such a hate with this book. and Not a hate, but like I have such a relationship and a story with this book, but I feel like I gave it like one star. I should just get rid of it and stop holding on because I always kept thinking like, what if I mature more and like when I'm older I want to read this or if I want to continue the series, but I bought this for a dollar, so... No hard feelings. It's got to go. Um, I have Joyland by Stephen King. This is my very first ever Stephen King novel, and it was a big letdown, and it's not something that I would be interested in reading again because I remember it as being a letdown, so that's going. Um, the Year of the Fog by Michelle Richmond. I had kind of high hopes for this book as well, but it just kind of disappointed. It fell kind of flat. It was very slow and not good pacing, so I wouldn't want to reread that one. Um, I just reviewed this one not too long ago, and this is Songs for the Missing by Stuart Onan. This was just really slow, and I felt like there was really no point to the end because there was no, like, at the end. So, not going to reread that one. Um, Struck, this is a bind-up of Stupid Cupid Flirting with Disaster and Pucker Up. Um, I read this back in February. I got this book from Jen, and it's just, it was cute. It was good for what I needed it for, like contemporary, but I don't foresee myself ever rereading it. Um, Wake by Lisa McMahon. 
I just don't see myself continuing with the trilogy. I really didn't really like, I really, really didn't like, that makes sense. I didn't like this first book, and I kept saying, oh, well, if I could get the second book cheap, but why would I do that to myself? There's so many good books out there that why waste my time on a series that I'm not fully in love with? Um, Vicious Little Darlings by Catherine er Eraser, or Ezer, not Eraser, it's Ezer. Um, this was a book that, like, I contemplated keeping because it is so beautiful, but I didn't really like the storyline too much. Um, it had, it, my expectations of it were supposed to be, like, girls in college, and it turned out to be, like, they were very young in college, or they were, like, still in high school. I don't remember. It just wasn't my thing. Um, The Divorce Papers by Susan Riger. I was... I received this in exchange for an honest review. It's got such a cool cover. It was so bad, though. Like, I got to page 122, and then I was like, I can't do this anymore, and I needed to stop. It is all, like, emails between people, and I was getting very lost and very confused, and I just couldn't do it. And this is, like, one of those books that I just, like, had to DNF. So if I had to DNF it, it's not really worth staying on my shelf. Um, Sisters Red by Jackson Pierce. I believe I actually gave this book four stars, but I don't foresee myself continuing on or rereading this, so it's also going. And then Clean by Amy Reed. It's about a bunch of, like, not children, but teenagers that have all these, like, drug addictions and things, and they are in, um, rehab and... I felt like it could have been a lot better than it was because a dual, it's like a, tr not a dual perspective. There's more than one perspective, but it just, it didn't hit me where I thought it would hit me. Um, The Godmother by Carrie Adams. I remember just not liking this book. I don't really remember why. I don't even remember what it's about. So if I can't even remember what it's about, clearly I wasn't a fan, which is unfortunate because this cover is like, gorgeous. And then The Spectacular Now by Tim Tharp. This is a book that I got off Book Outlet and I read it for the Booktubeathon last year and I despised this book. Like despised it. It has a teenager who's basically drunk all the time and I just didn't appreciate that. Um, the Kissing Booth by Beth Reckles. This was too long for its own good, considering it's a contemporary romance. I just, it was, it served its purpose. I read it and I enjoyed it, but I would never reread it. Um, Frankly, Dear, I'm Dead by Lydia J. Washburn is a mystery. And it, again, another, like, I'm, I'm going to stop saying that, but they were good. I just wouldn't reread it. Still Alice by Lisa Genova. I just read this for the book Tubathon. It was all right. Would never reread it. Rage, a love story by Julie Ann Peters. This is an LGBT book. It follows um, someone who is in a relationship with another girl, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was, but I wasn't very. I remember not really enjoying this book, so. Pretty though, it's pink. The United States of Air by J.M. Porup. I received this book in exchange for an honest review through First Reads on Goodreads. And I really didn't like this book, so bye. The J.A.P. Chronicles by Isabel Rose. Um, this book follows some girls that went to camp together a long time ago, and now it's like their reunion. I might actually, so I didn't really enjoy this because no offense, I'm not trying to be offensive or anything, but I'm not Jewish, and I didn't realize that J.A.P. stood for Jewish American Princess, so that's probably why I didn't enjoy it, but I do have a friend who's Jewish, so I wonder if she would actually like this. I'm seeing her on Saturday, so maybe I'll ask her, so I'm going to put that over there. Um, Persepolis by Mary Jane Satrapi. Um, this is a graphic novel. I read this in college and then I reread it again for the book Tubathon two years ago, or maybe it was last year, and it still didn't do it for me. So reading it twice didn't do it for me. It's got to go. 
Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. I read this book for the Rainbow-a-thon last year, and I really disliked it, so bye. The Lovely Bones by Alice Sebold. I got this from my library once, and I didn't like it at all, so bye. Um, Family Ties by Danielle Steele. This is another book that I reviewed on my channel when it first started, and my channel's almost four years old now, and I didn't like it then, so I don't think I will like it now. Um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I think I got this, like, on sale or something from Barnes & Noble or something like that, and I didn't appreciate it. Alrighty. Two more piles left. We have The Juliet Society by Sasha Gray. I just recently got this from the bargain bin, and then God, I did. It was not good. Not good. The Godmother, The Secret Cinderella Story by Carolyn Turgeon. This is supposed to be, like, a prequel kind of, like, fairy. It follows, like, the fairy godmother in Cinderella, and she's trying to make things right, and I don't know. I didn't really enjoy it. The Turning by Francine Prose. If you've been watching me a while, you probably saw me watching this and the struggle it took me to read this little baby book. It took me forever. I didn't exactly enjoy it. Not my thing, unfortunately. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Everybody loves this book and for some reason I just couldn't love it. I tried really hard and I just, unfortunately I couldn't do it. Two I Am at the Cat's Pajamas by Marie Helene Bertino. This is a book that I got in exchange for an honest review, and I contemplated keeping this one too because it is so beautiful, but I know I really didn't enjoy it, so I figured somebody else might enjoy it. The Penny Pinchers Club by Sarah Strohmeyer. Um, this book, I don't even remember... I think, like, this couple is getting, like, divorced, and, like, then she all of a sudden has to be, like... The mo like, because she has no money of her own, so now she's kind of got to, like, save all the money she can. And I don't remember, I don't think I liked this one at all. And then Requisition for a Thief, A Diamond for the Taking. This is another book that I got in exchange for an honest review. Um, it's actually signed to me from Goodreads, but I really didn't like this book too much and it's sad because and the author actually just recently found my review of this book and like commented like that there's a new edited version of this book or something that might be better and I was like sorry I don't want to read it because I didn't like it the first time so that was too bad. Um, Imaginary Girls by Nova Rensuma. I just remember being underwhelmed with this book. Um, it's got a really pretty cover though. Um, The Merciless by Danielle Vega. I heard a sequel just came out for this, but this book scared the bejeebers out of me. And I'm, it's my favorite color, so it's really sad that I have to let this go. But I just remember cringing and, like, freaking out reading this book. And I don't know if I appreciated that. So I have to get rid of it. Scary. Um, Julia Immortal by Stacey J. This is another book that I thought, like, if I could get the sequel cheaper, I would read the sequel, but I just have, I don't think I have the interest for it, unfortunately. White Trash Beautiful by Teresa Mamert. Um, I got this book for, like, 99 cents or something on Book Outlet, and, again, it was, like, it served its purpose. It's a short book. I read it, and I just don't foresee myself continuing on with the series. H.R. by Geoffrey. I like to call him Geoffrey. It's probably just Geoffrey. Neil. Um, this was another book that I got in exchange for an honest uh, review on Goodreads. Also autographed to me. But I remember being really repulsed by this book. And it was really nasty. And I didn't enjoy it. A lot of these books, I feel bad that they are so on my shelf. The Dolphin People by Torsten Kroll. Another lovely book that I got from Barnes & Noble in the bargain section. Another book that I reviewed on my channel when I first started, and people did not like my review of it in, that, in the comments, and I just, I feel like I always kept this book because I knew, like, I hated it so much, so, like, whenever there was tag videos, it would be like, oh, I could talk about it. 
oh, I could talk about it because I dislike it so much. But I feel like now is the time. I think I could finally part with it. And then The Perfect Witness I, by Iris Johansson. I just read this this year and I didn't like it. I wanted to return it, but it was too late. And then my last stack. I'm sorry this video is so long. Um, Juliet Naked by Nick Hornby. I think I even read this before my channel and I didn't enjoy it. I got it in a bargain section at Walmart and I didn't like it so much. Um, Split Image by Nina, I mean Anna Black. This is another book that I got from Goodreads and I feel like I enjoyed it. It satisfied what I needed it to do but I don't think I would reread it. Characters in Search of a Novel by Molly D. Campbell. This is one of the very first books that I actually went on Goodreads and I read it on an airplane but it didn't really, it could have been so much better than it was. It's cool because it's got like characters in there like illustrated but I wouldn't go through and try to reread this again. Um, the Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I was really excited to read this when Jen sent this to me, but it just kind of, he made me angry. I did not like Charlie or anything about this book. Um, Cowboy Outcast by C.C. Espino. This is another book that I also got from Goodreads. And it was alright. It's also signed. Um, but it was kind of weird. It's about this girl who kind of, like, falls in love with two brothers, I think, and... That was creepy. A little creepy. Something like Fate by Suzanne Colasanti. I didn't appreciate this book because, like, it's about two girls and they're, like, best friends. And then um, this girl goes to camp and then she, f the friend falls in love with the other friend's boyfriend. Which is a little weird. The Woman Who Wasn't There by um, Robin Gabby Fisher and Angelo J. Guillermo Jr. And this is about a woman who went all over the place saying that she was in the towers, that she survived, and then it turned out that she was never even in the towers during 9-11. So this is based off of, this is like a true, like, story. So I expected so much more out of it, and then it, I just kind of was bored by it. Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. I don't like this book at all. The movie is alright, I like the movie, but this is just, this doesn't cut it for me. The Starter Wife by Gigi Lavange Granger, Grazer, I can read. Um, I read this last year for the Booktubeathon, didn't enjoy it. Um, the Priceless Memories of Bob Barker. I don't know why I have this book other than I got it from a Walmart bargain bin for $3.97. It was really boring, I didn't like it. Uh, Kissing Christmas Goodbye by M.C. Beaton, and this is a mystery novel out of, like, a whole series, and I didn't really like this one, so I don't think I'll be, like, picking up any other books in this series either. Um, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister by Gregory Maguire. I don't like Gregory Maguire. I kept Wicked, though, because I have memories tied to it, but I have no memories tied to this one, so it's going. <laughs> Um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I didn't really enjoy this book, and I unhauled the sequel, so I might as well unhaul the first book, too. Love is the Higher Law by David Le Levithan. I thought I would enjoy this because it takes place around 9-11, but I don't like David Levithan's writing too much, so. And then these last two books kind of go together. They're both by Janet Ivanovich. Um, this is Finger Lickin' 15. This is book 15 out of like a 20-something series, and I haven't read any of them except the 15th one, so why keep that? And then The Husband List was a real huge disappointment for me. I thought it took place in the 